everyone, long time no see, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and uh, today in the style of Total Biscuit, I'd like to talk about matchmaking in video games, team play, and just overall general balance, because I feel as though it's a topic that has uh, been a bit controversial lately, especially when it comes to like games like Dota, Counter-Strike, or Call of Duty, because I know uh, each game has a community that has varying opinions on such things. Uh, in the background here, we have a game of Dota that quite well illustrates uh, team play and uh, matchmaking. You, like, even though this is an unranked game of Dota, it, uh, it, was, it was a very, very close game. It lasted for like an hour and two minutes, so I had to uh, pick and choose how much footage I could use today. But nevertheless, uh, to start off my discussion today, I'd like to talk about what makes matchmaking good, because I feel as though that's an opinion that varies across people. And if you ask me, I'd say that matchmaking that's good is competitive, uh, you can clearly take a lead, but you're never going to be crushed, and that's that's what I like even about Dota, even though it's unranked matchmaking. Uh, like, Dota is just a game in which you can be down, but you can still come back, as you'll, as you'll see in this game, spoiler alert. But even in Dota, like, there are still some times where you get crushed, and that's okay, because there's also some times where you crush. Like, it's, it's never too one-sided. For instance, uh, I think it might have been the same day we were playing it. No, it was a different game different get, uh, day, where me and my friends, we played four games of Dota. The first two we lost. We, we started out quite well, eventually just let the enemy team snowball, and then and then we lost in the end. So I was like, oh man, this is terrible, I don't want to play another one. But we decided to play another one anyways. Here we go, into the next game. Started out really strong. Uh, by the end, I think we won with like 60 kills to like 20. I was 36 and 0 with 14 assists, so... Phantom Assassin was kind of wrecking there, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was a blast. Well, it actually, it wasn't even that much of a blast to play. Like it was such it was such carnage that it, it wasn't even fun. And like that's that's not how matchmaking should be. I mean, every once in a while, it is fun to have a game where you just feel good, just destroying the enemy team. But it's it's really not all that fun. Like I had I enjoyed this game much more than the one in we just than the one in which we just destroyed. And I, I feel that this is the case just because there's such a sense of accomplishment when you finally come back because, like, you never think you're going to win. The next thing you know, you start getting a foothold and you're like, all right, maybe we can do this, guys. Come on, let's, let's, just, let's just work and let's get going. And then eventually in the end, you finally come back, you, you overpower the enemy team and you win. And it's like, yeah, that was cool. Like, we, that we shouldn't have been able to do that, but we did because we're good. And that, that's a lot more fun than just, wow, I'm 14 and 0. This is pretty cool, but, you know, I mean... All I'm doing is killing them. Like, there's no question as to whether we're going to win or not because we know that we are. So, like, that's why I feel competitive matchmaking is, is good. But the only thing is, having competitive matchmaking, like, really close and competitive matchmaking all the time, it really isn't all that great because eventually you just get tired of it and you're like, oh my god, i got to work so hard every single time. So it is nice to have those games in which, you, you know, you just get a break and you just destroy, which... I almost like the unranked matchmaking of Dota for that reason, because you get some games where you get destroyed, you get some games where it's really close and competitive, and then you get some games where you just go and destroy. I feel that that's really important for matchmaking. That's that's the reason why I think a lot of people didn't like uh, what COD was. I think it was Advanced Warfare with its skill-based matchmaking, because it was always really competitive, and people didn't like it. You know, I know like my friends would say it's, it's you know, you're playing with sweaties because everybody's trying so hard all the time and it gets tiring to play, like it's not fun because sometimes when you play a game you just want to sit back, relax, and just enjoy yourself, but whenever it's ultra competitive you really can't do that. So that, that's why I like the matchmaking in Dota. When it comes to the matchmaking in CS, I, I'd like to show you a little pick. This right here is my most recent uh, match history in CS, and as you can see I've only won one out of the last ten games after they changed matchmaking in CS. If you ask me winning 1 out of 10, it's not fair matchmaking, because every single game you just lose, and you lose, and you lose. And I feel as though a reason for that, especially in Counter-Strike, is because of the team play that works in Counter-Strike. Like, there can be a lot of times where you're just going, doing really well in a game, but your teammates just suck. And I mean, like, this, the same thing happens with Dota, and that's why, I like, like if, if you play Dota, or Counter-Strike, really, you pretty much have to play with a team at this point, because there's so many other people that have like teams getting together and it just works. That's why I like matchmaking Dota as well because if you're in a five-man team it tries to place you against a five-man team and there's just a lot more synergy that can work here. Like for instance in this game of Dota uh, I play Phantom Assassin, I'm the carry, so as you can see I, uh, I'm on bottom with Mark and Chad and they pretty much 
protect me while I can level up until I can get my ultimate, because Phantom Assassin is a really weak character until you get your ultimate. So they protect me, they level up, I level up. There are two support characters. At middle, we have Ian, and who's, he's playing Zeus, so that way, like, he, he's a strong character who can handle himself at mid. So he levels up and just gets ready to be able to do some serious damage once he gets high enough level. But then, uh, and then, oh, also at top, we have Barry. He's playing Troll Warlord. He's kind of like a hybrid of support and carry, and he helps a lot in the end. But as you can see right here, like, this is a little bit later in the game where the enemies, that they came back, like, we, we started out pretty strong getting most of the kills, and then now it's, like, 40 to 44, and, we're, like, we, we, we still have a close lead, but, you know, it's not enough, and they have, uh, Timbersaw is level 25, so he's vastly out-leveling every one of us, because he's just, he's, uh, snowballed, and, like, the only thing is, the only thing that's saving us in this game is our team play, which is crucial to matchmaking, because a lot of the times you can have people of, you know, technically equal skill level, but if they don't have team play, it's not going to matter, because, like, as you can see here, I think that we're being out-leveled, uh, maybe not by these two, but just the fact that Mark can freeze uh, all the enemies and do, like, a little bit of constant damage, and uh, also area of effect damage, because he's playing Jackaro, like, it just helps so much, because then they can take some blows, they can help, while I just deal massive damage, because I am a carry, so I'm pretty, pretty high-leveled at this point, I think I'm level, like, 19 or 20. And I just go in and get the kills, and then we all level up eventually, and we, uh, we start to snowball ourselves. But the only problem with that is that the enemies also, too, they, they can have team play. This, this team that we were facing right here, they didn't have the greatest team play. They pretty much were being carried by Timbersaw most of the time, because he's, he was doing a lot of damage. He was really squishy, and he could attack multiple of uh, us at once. So when we tried to group fight like this, like, which is one of our favorite strategies, we, we like group rush somewhere. Like, he would just destroy us, as you can see right here, we're about to get destroyed. And, like, that just kind of went on for a while. But the only problem is, like, with matchmaking, if you have a team that has really good, like, players, or not, like, yeah, really good players, but, like, really bad team play, they're probably going to lose. Like, in this match, we had, I mean, we're pretty much terrible at it, I'm not going to lie. Like, we, we haven't played that much, but we're... We're getting the hang of it, it's just, it's taken a while, and there's people who are definitely better than us, but we win because we play as a team well, like, we, we've just developed synergies with our characters, and it works. And I'm pretty sure that this is where a lot of other games fall short in matchmaking, like, they, they fail to account for team play. Like, Counter-Strike, for example, like, you are grouped based on your rank. Well, the only issue is if, say, everyone's DMG, alright. And then you're facing a team of everyone who's, I don't know, MG2. The only problem is, your team is terrible at playing together, so you're always moving, like, by yourselves, just acting independently, and it, it really just doesn't work. Chances are, the team of MG2s is still gonna win, just because if they're playing coordinated, that they're able to pick you off one by one, like, it's gonna help them. But even though you're technically higher rank, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all, and that's where a lot of games fail to account, which is why I like Dota because it accounts for team play. And right here is an example of being able to come back, because as you can see, the enemy team, they are in our base, they've taken out our, they're taking out our mid-towers right now, and we have to get them out. And there's pretty much no team play going on here. Like, Mark's just randomly trying to kill stuff. I'm diving right into the middle of everybody, trying to kill them desperately, which you know, evidently, you know, doesn't work. And we get destroyed because we didn't have any coordination there. Like, everybody was just panicked because, oh my god, they're about to take our Ancient, which they almost did. Spoiler, they don't know. And eventually, we, we, we were able to do enough damage that they had to run away. But of course, they did come back. And when they came back, the only person we had left, I think, was C-Mac, because all of us were dead. Because, of course, you know, we just ran in there and we're like, ah, we're gonna live, guys, except we got destroyed. Oh no, Ian's alive, too. And if you see here, like, this is an example of that good team play, where Ian does the damage, he chains lightning together, and C-Mac is just absorbing the hitch, which is part of C-Mac's just role on our team. He absorbs hits because his ultimate gives him a lot of health, and it just works like that. And then eventually Barry comes back alive, he starts doing his serious damage, because Troll Troll Warlord has pretty good damage. And together, like, these two are able to get rid of the enemy team from our base, like, even though they got our Ancient nearly to half. And they, they were able to together defeat Timbersaw because they could slow him, they could do damage. And then, in turn, we were able to push back. And, like, just the team synergy just helped us so much there.
and like working as a team we were able to destroy the guy who they had as carry and then like it was easy to beat the rest of the team because the rest of the team wasn't that leveled but like in matchmaking just in general I feel as though all matchmaking should account for teams which it doesn't like there's a lot I know I've got friends who play Call of Duty and they always complain you know they're playing playing against a five-man clan oh my god they're playing against sweaties who are trying hard well in all honesty there's nothing wrong with trying hard in a game like it's kind of what you're supposed to do you're supposed to win so if and typically if you play as a team everybody is trying unless it's a game of counter-strike where you're just like hey guys let's mess around and use the r8 the whole game because it's overpowered oh it was <laughs> flashbacks to the uh, the r8 video the only other option i see is that if if the game does not account for team play have just an unranked playlist I'm, I'm, i don't believe that most games do have like the same game types as regular matchmaking but in unranked i know like counter-strike you have casual but casual is nowhere near the same uh call of duty i think call of duty is pretty much all ranked they, they do have specifically ranked playlists but it's it's you know you actually have a rank it's not like just the typical matchmaking like there's always matchmaking active so for instance like you know in dota you have your rank matchmaking, which I don't think I've even gotten into yet. I don't think I'm high enough level because I'm only level like eight or something like that. But you have your rank matchmaking, and then you have your unranked matchmaking. So if you're feeling like you know, just maybe say you're a really good Dota player and you want to just relax and play a game of Dota. All right, well go ahead and unrank matchmaking and uh, hope for the best that you get paired against Scrubbies. <laughs> but, like there should always be an option like that because sometimes you, you don't feel like playing competitive. And that's okay, because games are made for fun, and if you're not having fun, well, why would you play the game? You should always be able to have fun. And that that's pretty much the main point of my, my view on matchmaking. Like, it, you need to be able to always have fun, so you should have options. Maybe you want to play ranked, maybe you want to play, like, I don't know, you can't really have super ranked, but you know what I mean. Like, you, you want to play a super competitive game that's just going to be close the whole time, and right here is a really good uh, point in uh, this game. Uh, during this game, we, we had Chad stand back in base just in case they push, because we knew that our Ancient was vulnerable. So here, Chad just pretty much tries to distract while... Because the only other person alive is Ian, and I think he just got killed there. But, uh, no, he didn't. Chad got killed. But the only, like, he just tried to distract while we could all respond. And if that didn't happen, then yeah, we would have lost the game right here. Like, this would have been it. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but back to matchmaking. Uh, yeah, my main point is just make it so that you can have fun no matter what. You shouldn't be restricted to only playing one type of matchmaking, one type of game mode. Because especially like today, there's a lot of games that are just like, hey, let's pack our game full of game modes so you have options. Well, I mean, it's great to have options, but have options in who you play against as well. But yeah, so that that's that's pretty much my, my view on matchmaking. It just it just needs to accommodate for teams. And you should always have options because you don't always feel like playing competitive. So uh, aside from that, I'd like to just talk about Dota for a little bit because I've been playing Dota for a while. As you can see, I've, especially in this gameplay, do have another nice competitive game. And uh, right here is our our final push into the uh, the enemy's base. I get very close to dying here. Phantom Assassin, by far my favorite character. Second favorite is probably Juggernaut. I think we were playing against a Juggernaut in this game, but he was, he was not a very good Juggernaut. And one of the most important things with Phantom Assassin is attack speed and lifesteal. Because as you can see right here, I'm very low on health. I probably would have died against uh, Timbersaw if I didn't have lifesteal. But then now, Mark goes ahead, freezes uh, Timbersaw. I can go in, teleport in, and just finish him off. Actually, I don't think I even do that on my teammate. Yeah, I do. And then we're able to just take the Ancient and win. So yeah, Dota. Very fun game. If, if, if you haven't tried Dota yet, you got to try Dota. You will get crushed at first, it's a learning curve, kind of like Counter-Strike. And But once you start winning, it's so satisfying, like, there, there's... The first time we won a game of Dota, like, it was, it was so much fun, so much fun. But that pretty much concludes today's commentary in the style of Total Biscuit on matchmaking in video games. Uh, if you like commentaries like this, I can keep doing them. I'll probably try to upload some, you know, short, funny videos. I'm not gonna be up uploading that often, but, uh... If you enjoyed the video, like, recommend your friends, whatever you want to do, I really don't care. I've been the Saxy Gamer playing Dota 2, got 22 kills, 15 deaths. Uh, thank you and goodbye.